it's been a while, almost two months, in fact, since the last time I made a full-length video. And if you're wondering how I spent those two months, well, here's a recap of month one. And that was basically how I spent the entire month. Month two, however, was a bit more exciting. Like most great adventures, it began at a McDonald's drive-thru. I'm in line at the McDonald's drive-thru and some guy just knocked on my window and it rolled down the window and he was like, hey, when you're done, can you pull over to that parking lot over there? My friends want to get a picture with your Barbie Prius. And I said, okay, I live to please. Is this a good spot? This is like the most Ohio thing. You're all just hanging out in a McDonald's parking lot. We're just doing a car meet. We're all driving around. These things are front wheel drive, right? I don't know. These are in the perfect spot for burnouts. Lift it, put some big mud tires on it. Or you Make it intimidating. Go Toledo, put some spinners on it. To be honest with me, are you a pimp? She looks like. You get your Kodak. Thrift store. Doesn't it just make you feel like New York? It had to be a sign. New York. See, one of my lifelong best friends, Stephanie, invited me to watch the Oscars at her place in New York City. Having never been there, I was a bit apprehensive about going. But then the sole female at this teenage car gang's meeting happens to bring up New York. New York. New York. It had to be fate. So after I got a picture with these tenacious teens. You gotta get out and get a group picture with us. Okay. okay. Move over. Barbie. Get, get the Barbie. Get yeah. the Barbie. I went home and began preparing for my impending trip. Now, having never been there, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect, aside from this deep abiding feeling that my fashion game needed to be stepped up ever so slightly. So a few days before takeoff, I thought, maybe I should just make a few outfits for the trip. Part one, the prep. For fabric, I hit up Goodwill and found a valance that would be perfect for this prairie core design. Because nothing says Manhattan like Minnesota. I'm going to try to get it done in- 20 minutes. Which shouldn't be too hard since it's a valance because it already has a channel where I could put elastic through. The end is already finished. It's the perfect length. So let's see how this goes. Hold your valance in half like the drunk driving finger test. You know, so like the two ends meet each other. Then sew it up the back, but leave the channel open. Cut some elastic to the length of your waist, then send it through the channel using either a safety pin or Ant-Man to carry it through. Once he's emerged out the other side, tie the elastic ends together and apologize to Ant-Man for not watching his most recent film. I'm sure it was great, but we're all kind of collectively over superhero movies, aren't we? I mean, at least until the next Spider-Man comes out. Nextly, these curtain ties Backs were practically begging me to turn them into something highly sus, and for the older crowd, the word sus is short for suspenders, which we're gonna pin in its own place. Upon finishing, I deigned to show my father my handiwork, but he was busy rubbing the back of my brother, whose laser-eyed dog seemed to warn me not to interrupt them. Oh my gosh. Voila, that was pretty much exactly 20 minutes. And now a moment of vulnerability. <sighs> Hi. I'm in Karen Tours and my brain barely works. You see, I've had my fair share of concussions and to be frank, my genetics don't exactly set me up for success either. The area in which this deficiency most presents itself is probably memory. Like I don't remember names, but I remember I am equally bad with faces, but I can compensate for these shortcomings by taking a lot of vitamins and supplements. You know what they say, healthy body equals healthy mind. But with my PFB, poorly functioning brain. It's overwhelming just figuring out which vitamins I should take. That's where Care Of comes into play. Care Of is a wellness routine made easy. You take a quiz on their website and once they know your priorities, they carefully curate the perfect daily regimen for you. Back to my doctors. Now you might be wondering how I remember which pills I've already taken each day and which I haven't. Well, before Care Of, I didn't remember. So I often took the same vitamins and supplements over and over, which is quite unhealthy and deadly sometimes. But Care Of makes it so easy for people like me. Your vitamins will come divvied up into these individual packets, which you can just slam all at once first thing in the the morning. Or you could take them one at a time if you're a coward who can't swallow multiple pills. No judgment. My favorite thing about Care Of is probably how convenient it is for traveling. You know, when you don't want to pack a bunch of gigantic pill bottles, thus potentially getting yourself flagged and maybe strip searched by TSA. Instead, you just pack as many Care Of packets as the number of days you're going to be gone. So you can save yourself the confusion and trauma and make more room for packing important things like tall candles. So take care of yourself. Follow the link in my description and use my code MACARA50. Okay, I feel like there was a missed opportunity there and my code should have been MACARA, but it's okay. Macara 50. For 50% off your first order. That can't be right. Let me check the email. Nope, it says 50. So, might be a typo on their end, but if it is, they have to honor it, so act fast. Thanks, Kara, for sponsoring this video and improving my health. For my next look, I wanted to take inspiration from the 1960s as well as the 1830s and the 1630s. And here's the brainchild that those vibes conceived of. I made a mock-up out of this old sheet, which I swear on my life, I've cut this thing up like eight times, and yet here it sits, all innocent and put together like a fully intact, gaslighting little bed sheet. If you wanna make this dress, just take a screenshot of these pattern pieces, hook your phone up to your portable mini projector, walk it about eight feet back from your hanging fabric and trace it. Then cut those pieces out and voila, you no longer have a projector screen to watch movies on. Sew the front two skirt panels together. And as always, press the seams till they're flat as planet Earth. Now here you're watching my failed first attempt at a top. I thought the gathered look would be cute, but when it was inexplicably not cute, I cut it into three separate pieces like this, then sewed them back together giving me this. But I showed you my failed attempt so that you would know even sometimes I make mistakes. 
like when I accidentally took my melatonin three times in one evening. I installed a zipper in the back, but you won't need to do that because this dress is so cute, you're gonna wanna sew it on yourself and wear it permanently. Though, Garion seems to prefer the last dress. Time to make those frivolous sleeves. Cut out a sleeve that seems like it'll be way too big and flip up the bottom edge to about the width of two pencils. That's where your elastic will go. Then lazily hand stitch all along the top and pull it into gathers until it fits perfectly in your armhole. Then gently force your elastic into its new home, like it's your grandpa in his twilight years. But we're not done yet, because what do the 1830s, 1630s, and 1960s have in common? They're all eras. Great job. Wow, all this trivia is making my brain tired. So let's just hot glue some lace onto this dress and call it finished. Now let's show dad. Just kidding. He was rubbing Landon's back again. I do love those boys. Ready to meet our next design? It takes inspiration from Little Bo Peep, Wall Street, and the future. I call it drawing of an outfit I'm going to make. Start by forgetting to press record while cutting out the shape of some shorts. Pin them onto yourself and mark where you want them to start and stop. Next, to make the frufuls, grab some jersey knit and cut out eight or so strips that are as wide as a guinea pig and as long as a goat. Then cut out pieces of elastic as long as the width of your shorts. Pin the ends of one elastic to each end of one of your strips, then send it through the sewing machine, stretching the elastic as you go. When you're done, let go and the elastic should snap right back into place like a postpartum Victoria's Secret model. Now I hope you haven't sewn the sides of your shorts together yet because this step will be a lot easier if the shorts are only attached at the crotch. Pardon my French. Evenly lay your rows of ruffles across the front and back of your shorts. Then top stitch them on using a zigzag stitch, aka the one that looks like President Nixon's lie detector test, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, before your time. <laughs> When all the ruffles are in place, then you may sew up the sides, and I won't have to say the word crotch again. Hmm, I just did though, huh? I'm gonna go take a hit of some mouthwash. I'm back. Now, as you watch me sew in a waistband, you're probably tempted to ask why bloomers are such a necessity in New York City. Well, I'll expand on this later, but they are necessary. Take it from me, someone who's never been there. Side note, while working on these, I was watching the show Making the Cut, which my dad claims to not enjoy, but he seemed kind of invested. Eat. Outfits each. I hope they're gonna give them a lot more time. Speaking of a lot more time, it was not a lot more time before I was done and ready to show my dad, but he was busy vacuuming Landon. See, Landon was about to go visit my mom, who's allergic to dogs, so he was getting the dog. Yeah. Let's play charades. Can you tell what I'm supposed to be? That's right, a businessman. But I had faith we could turn this shirt from office man to officially glam. I have nothing more to say about this. Good morning, good night, it's 2.30 a.m. Well, I can't sleep because it's my grandma's birthday and that bugged me. So I wanted to feel like I was with her. So I watched this video that was taken right before she died. I don't know why, you know, self-sabotage mode. It made things worse, but- I got this idea. She loved cats, but she couldn't have a cat because my mom and my brother Michael were severely allergic. So she had all these hyper-realistic fake cats throughout her house. She even had one that had a thing in it that would make it look like it was breathing super crazy i got this thought maybe i should spend my weakness making a cat thing i have some leftover fabric from when i made the fur coat for the dog you know you don't know so let's do that there's the fab oh there's the fabric i just made this sketch yikes and this is something i really don't want to think about too hard i want this to be kind of big because in new york things are i don't freaking know i've never been there cut out a cat head shape in the size of whatever it is you want to carry around with you in new york help me out here what's something that people carry around with them in new york maybe like a tiny little tea cup dog like they carry around in schmecks in the city i've never seen that movie show whatever it is but i for some reason assume that's something they do wow i just realized there's a lot of things i know nothing about they embroidered faces on the front and back and that took me approximately as long as the first season of better call Saul. actually exactly as long as that because we watched that whole season in a day while i made this purse or should i say this Purse. It was around this time that I finally checked the forecast for my impending weekend in New York and noticed it was going to be freezing. After putting such great effort into making these cute little get-ups, the thought of just covering them up with a coat simply melted my will to live. So I laid out two layers of flesh, colored material, and I made some fitted sleeves that I could just throw under any of my outfits for extra warmth. And let me tell you, one of the best decisions I've ever made, I am still wearing them like every day. Part two the trip. We left out of Detroit, and by we, I mean me and Frances. She came because she texted me and asked if I had plans to watch the Oscars, and I said, yeah, I'm going to my friend's house in New York, but you can come if you want. And she said, okay, then booked a flight. And let me tell ya, spontaneous friends, chef's kiss. They're the only friendships I am able to maintain. Oh look, it's you Nork. After we all slipped into something less comfortable to watch the Oscars, you'll never believe what we did.
We watched the Oscars. I must say, this was one of the best Academy Award shows in years. Almost everyone who I wanted to win won. There were all these emotional comebacks, and it really inspired me to fade into obscurity so that someday I could have an emotional comeback. Really, though. Well deserved. I cried. Then it was time to get ready for bed, but upon rummaging through my suitcase, I realized I forgot to pack toothpaste, but I packed two things of Vaseline, so we'll just use that. Mm, that sounds like something from a Saw movie. <laughs> Oh, toothpaste actually. <laughs> she came right when I Stephanie, why couldn't you have come 10 seconds ago? That wasn't even scripted. She did indeed have toothpaste, but since there was already petroleum jelly on my toothbrush and I'm not a wasteful little miscreant, I decided to try it. It feels moisturizing. Oh, that's so weird. That is so weird. <laughs> I don't think it's toxic. Petroleum? I mean, that sounds <laughs> The next day, we came to find out that it was the next day. This footage was taken by our friend Josh, who had just arrived that morning. He bought his ticket later than Francis, making him even more wonderfully spontaneous and a bit invasive of my privacy. It's worth sleeping in around these two, though, because by the time I wake up, breakfast just always seems to be there. The gluten-free ones are small, but I got three because I didn't know that they were all going to be like two pounds each. They're so heavy. I mean, they're so heavy. <laughs> What's on it? This noodle place might be alright. Before heading out for coffee, I put the green dress back on. Cause I've noticed it seems to be like a weekend trend in New York to stumble out of a building in the morning wearing the dress you wore the night before. And I do want to be trendy. Oh no, it's raining. <laughs> oh what's that? A subway's going by? My skirt's about to fly up? Oh no! <gasps> Just kidding, I got it covered. And that's why you should always wear bloomers in New York City. Later that same day, it was time to try on drawing of an outfit I'm going to make. I was so incredibly relatively okay with the result that I knew I needed to model it in the perfect location. And thus began our search for scenery. Is there a dog up there? It's definitely difficulter than I expected. Difficulter? It's a good thing I wore my raincoat. This is a New York accent. A little bit of the Bronx. You nar. <laughs> this is Josh, and despite his name, he's actually one of a kind. If you must give him a nickname, though, to differentiate him from all the other Joshes the world has to offer, a good one might be Camera Josh. He's always taking pictures or videos, and he gets the best shots. Not to mention his constant, enthusiastic, yet monotone encouragement. Look at her. Wow. <laughs> We saw some incredible wildlife in New York, like this, hold on, bird. A New York bird eating a New York bagel. I said New York bird eats New York bagel. <laughs> I guess you just had to be there. I mean, this really was the highlight of our trip. We continued on our quest for scenery, which led us to the country's longest basement. Is this Grand Central Station? Is it not? It's like a tapeworm moving through bowels. I could just jump on one of those. They trust us with this? No gates. Cedar Point. Freedom. Manhattan was neat, but we couldn't see the top of the Eiffel Tower because it was so foggy and rainy, so we took shelter inside of the world-famous Apple Store. Yep, so something you can only find in New York. I was happy, though, because I was with people I loved and I could still show off my one-of-a-kind cat bag. I mean, how many people in this world have a big white cat face for a purse? Oh. Mm. That night, after successfully shooting more breeze with Stephanie, we stayed at a hotel, but she knew we'd struggle to find our way there, so she gave us a quick tutorial on how the subways work. Wait, as, hold on. Wait. And what does the BDFM stand for? It stands for nothing. And QRW and the R are not to share the same line. Luckily next, I dealt with something I understood perfectly. There he is. There he is, my first New York round. This smells disgusting, by the way. <laughs> I love that you stopped recording right then. The people here are just so inspired, so jubilant. Okay, so this little pinafore outfit, it's like cute by Midwestern stand stand standards. Now we'll make it New York fashionable. Shut up. This is New York fashionable. Then Josh and I went out to get coffee, and when I say Josh and I, I mean just Josh and I, because... A member of our clan has been touched by sickness and steamy fingers. She's got stomach flu. Stomach fingers. Like poetry, kind of. I'm waxing poetic. I don't get it. They get it. 
because it was hideously cold and snowing on that last day there, I wasn't about to go on another quest for scenery. So you are happy with this shot. You like it and feel feelings of contentment towards me. This coffee shop was delicious, but it was kind of strange that it had signs that basically just applied to me. By the way, I lied about it being delicious. Oh, and if you were worried about Francis, don't worry. We brought her back some toast, then promptly left her again to celebrate Stephanie's birthday by eating $20 strawberries that I dare say were worth it. And sadly, it was time to say goodbye to Cassie and Stephanie. Dang, I love these girls. Not much has changed since 21 years ago. Well, actually, everything has changed, but I digress. And yes, adults did make fun of my legs a lot when I was this age. Can't say I blame them. Hi, welcome to New York. I'm about to take you on a tour of some of the most affordable apartments in New York. Now, here's what you can get for about 800 a month in the city of New York City. It's cozy. Now on to our next price bracket, which is 4,000 a month. Now, if you were worried about Frances again, don't worry, she had a great day without us. How was your day? Poopy. The next day, it was my turn to feel poopy. I awoke to the sweet serenade of the maid banging on the door, telling us it was time to get out. As we Ubered to the airport, it hit me how much I'd missed out on during this brief stay. So many sights unseen, so many foods untasted, so many questions unanswered. I figured at least our Uber driver might be able to help with that last part. Uh, Mr. Driver, do you know what the population of New York City is? Good question. Have you ever been to Ohio? Ohio? No, I haven't. Yeah, you gotta see it sometime. I think it's one of the eight wonders of the world. Like what part of Ohio or just anywhere in the Toledo. If you can ever make it up to Toledo, Ohio, the scenery is like gorgeous. The mountains. I love to travel. Just, uh, nowadays, you know, I'm I wonder if you could go there and do Uber driving there. Kind of like how travel nurses do travel nursing. That would be awesome. Cleveland's pretty cool too. I think it's a really good smelling city. Well, maybe I can go and see how it is. New York is not the best smelling place. Like when you lean over the subway, I noticed it's a very fecal smell. Well, I agree. Do you like this song? Me? Yeah. It's all right. I haven't seen the video. You don't need to. Little known fact about New York, I found out that their airports are actually not underground. All in all, it was a cool trip. My garments served me well enough. I got the most compliments on my cat bag and the second most compliments on this outfit, but I complimented myself on the dress most. I kind of like it. Then we said goodbye to New York almost as quickly as we'd arrived. Is that Alcatraz? And before we knew it, we were back in the great nation of Detroit, Ohio. Now last time I flew back from somewhere, it took me ages to find my dad's car in the hustle and bustle of busy travelers. So my pro tip for you is to paint your car pink and have your dad pick you up in that. So so, how do we feel about the video? You no? Know? Yeah, I'm not too pleased with it either. Honestly, my expectations for this were totally different. I saw myself wearing cooler stuff in front of cooler, stereotypical New York scenery in a just more cinematic way. However, that was impossible due to weather, sickness, excuses, excuses, hacking space. As far as all the New York sites go, you name it, we didn't see it. But don't worry, I'm totally gonna make it up to you. I'm gonna redo this whole video. I'm gonna go back to New York, give myself more packing space, um, get a little apartment, this cute little studio in Upper Manhattan with exposed break, you know, right next to Central Park, stay there maybe a year, make some things. Am I kidding? I mean, maybe, but also I am unhinged. I don't know. I guess that's the sort of thing one should put to an Instagram vote. So stay tuned. <laughs>